are back with our second conversation for this morning to talk about crime and safety in Belize. Joining us in studio, we have Superintendent Christopher Noble, the Deputy Regional Commander and Operations for the Eastern Division. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning, morning, lady. <laughs> morning, Belize. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, waking up early well, <laughs> and joining I us this morning. I normally do, but today is special because I was brought to <laughs> Channel 5. <laughs> I, why I feel like that cannot come willingly? You are brought there's, and screaming. There's, there's no kicking and screaming in what I've been doing for a little while now. <laughs> says it so unwillingly. <laughs> no, well, I'll, I'll say this right. Initially, it would have been the commissioner of police yes. who would have joined us this morning for the conversation. I'm hoping you're glad with a better representative. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> so, so he can't say kicking and screaming, right? Because now he's here. He willingly he's came. Yes, better. I, I am <laughs> attempting to be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, superintendent, again, thank you so much for being here this morning. We want Sunny and I were talking about this weekend, and I know we're going to expand a little bit more, but. I think for the most part, we were discussing how, um, how enlightening and refreshing it was that for Carnival itself, there didn't seem to have any mishaps. And um, I wanted to ask about the thought process or I guess the, um, the schematics behind how you all um, monitor and patrol an event like Carnival. <laughs> For starters, it's, it's, it's as much as the public was nervous, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe there was some sense of nervousness on our side mm -hmm. because it had been, there had been a gap yeah. in between the last carnival event mm -hmm. and this one mm -hmm. due to our pandemic going through. But in our planning, we did a lot of dry runs Mm -hmm. We did a lot of um, hot spot checking, and uh, when we did our our operation order, it it rounded out around two hundred. And uh, after speaking with the commissioner and uh, commander operations, we were upwards of three hundred people. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot to be done when it came to who will be coming out because people were releasing, they're reveling, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're trying to relax. Albeit, there was a lot of nervousness um, or, or new phenomenon, social media hasn't helped us in mm -hmm. spreading doom and gloom because there are people out there that utilize it for that purpose. If you um, look at, if I could jump in quickly and say this, if you look at the shooting incident earlier last week, right before Soka Moka was to be judged, people took to social media afterwards to do just as you're explaining. They went to the doom and gloom. Oh, well, if this is a prelude to what yeah. to be expected, then I'm not going to carnival because, you know. Well, mm -hmm. when you look at that, that incident, mm -hmm. that incident never happened at the mass camp. Mm -hmm. It never it happened within the vicinity of the mass camp, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate that it, 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 it did, but do we now say that Soka Moka attracts? No. Mm -hmm. It is an unfortunate incident that happened where somebody who just isn't trying to play right. He's trying to harm somebody else and he did. Um, I do believe that more could have been done, but again, the commander for that that division had something in place. The police were there, yeah, not to stop the incident, but to address it after it happened. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the police is never there before an incident because you can't. It is like be it is like an ambulance. <laughs> Yeah. And a fire truck. Mm -hmm. So we can't be there before. It it has to be after I saw I saw where somebody was saying um and had spoken to me and said, But the police did nothing. 
there are times when people need to understand that the police are there for a security purpose. We're not mm -hmm. there. And to save lives, sometimes it means to stay away from what that is and just be a security mm -hmm. aspect of that entire scenario. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back to, to crime and, and the whole topic of safety, right? Coming into the police can't be there at all times. And I asked about how you all patrol and how you all maneuver certain events like the one that we had. Um, let's talk about the incident that they put the hypothetical incident at, at Juvert. There has not been any um, news out yet. There's just been what we have seen and heard on social media. So well, when we discuss again, right, it, it's, what, it's like you said, it's not a friend to the police, but sometimes it does help the public to maybe stay away from certain places or to be informed right away so that they're not, you know... Well, as much as anything can be used for negative, it can, in the same light, be used for positive. Mm -hmm. um, Juve, we had a high number of officers and I believe another 32 were in put, put in place to secure that commando operations brought in more people mm -hmm. because we were not on alert but strategizing to secure the city from midnight yeah so breathing easy seeing the last of it and the police moving away from that majestical area within seconds within seconds mm -hmm. there's a camera footage which was gained which i looked at and it was maybe 12 seconds after the police took off mm -hmm. that somebody from within the juve revelers and somebody from the sideline had an altercation it was not uh fatal thankfully thankfully yeah but it was an incident that we would have preferred not to have happened and uh, we do have somebody in custody uh we're hoping to get cooperation of the victims and uh, move forward with prosecution mm -hmm. to bypass no? it goes to show that the criminal mind only waits for law enforcement it's an opportunity exactly it's an opportunity and it's not only waiting for law enforcement it is believing that you can get away mm -hmm. and a lot of times they don't a lot of times they don't i i can say that it is not everywhere that people don't cooperate with the police when you talk about conviction rates and so and so forth you know the, what is what is then provided to, to the public i guess in our eyes we see it as it's people still can get away with it. The p things happen and the police didn't co get there on time and somebody got away, you know, or there well, is. Yes. Well, in <laughs> the police are never on time. There is, there is, there, and, and uh, it may sound harsh on my part to say we are never on time because on time would be before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on time would be during, mm -hmm. but we're policing from last check i think it's 35 square kilometers mm -hmm. of people on land that we may not readily have an officer there too yeah so if the conviction rate is anything to, has anything to do with it i i would want to differ with what is put out there because i do see daily convictions of persons mm -hmm. but is a conviction rate something that will go to help crime we don't know mm -hmm. it has to be something studied and we've been looking at it to say oh these people want to change these people are changed but we've never looked at it to say do we want these people to come up mm -hmm. into society with either i can see safely that there are people that have lived in whatever areas you're thinking mm -hmm. and they have ne never come up to become that kind of a problem i, I I'll, I'll go to a video i looked at 
with a very little young boy on a riverside being spoken to in Dangriga. I think you remember that, Isani, mm -hmm. that's you. <laughs> so so it's it's not that where you come from will define you. Mm -hmm. You know? So there's nobody that can tell me anybody from a single parent home is at risk. Mm -hmm. My mother raised a half a dozen kids. Mm -hmm. And I can show you where each one is. Yeah. And they're not in prison. As we're looking at this idea that <clears throat> the community does not necessarily define what you become. Exactly. You are chiefly responsible for, for who, you become. who you are, what you want to become, what yes. you want to make of yourself. Yes. Right? When you look at the entire 35 square kilometers, as, as you mentioned, and the fact that you have all these pockets of young men who in some cases are intent on crime and violent activities the police department as it is notwithstanding its complement of officers is stretched fairly thin you're always going to be reactionary because if you are able to contain one area and focus is placed there Something else pops up from somewhere else and you have to go and respond. It's a, it's a, it's a ballooning effect, mm -hmm. that's for sure. But even the people that we go after mm -hmm. are not intent on having us go after them. Yeah. They want to do whatever they want to do with nobody going after them. You know, it's, it's where these people decide that I will be doing this because this is my end result they see and re end result they don't look at the intervention that may be from a security standpoint mm -hmm. now that makes for it to to say what the police comes to harass me yeah it's called the job mm -hmm. if we came to visit you once twice three four five times it is a job mm -hmm. and whenever these people learn that they are paying for that job we're the, we're, and, I, and I just said to somebody, I said, we're the only agency that is paid, we're employees, to deal with our employers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which neighborhood you're from. You buy an, a, a bag of water, mm -hmm. it has taxes on it, taxes pay us. Yeah. I'll say to them, thanks for paying us. But I'll also say, say to them, you have to realize where you're wrong mm -hmm. and quit if you yeah. can't realize where you're wrong and quit no intervention process at no level will help you mm -hmm. you know there's 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 a lot i can say to that because there's a lot that i've lived mm -hmm. to see through it you know you we've tried but at what point will they realize it Mm -hmm. it's not for us to realize we already know what the problem is it's all the more difficult though when you have a society that is naturally antagonistic towards law enforcement but it is not everybody that is antagonistic mm -hmm. the percentages will definitely be in our favor mm -hmm. it is for us to work with the people that aren't mm -hmm. however people you have influences yeah that will say no it is because i am a black youth it is because i am from this with this name it is because this person doesn't like me if i'd grown up with everybody not liking me i would not be where i'm at mm -hmm. there's a lot that a lot of people will say wait but he wasn't liked by this person nobody should like you the one you should like is in the mirror mm -hmm. you should love that person i mean but coming back to to the 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 ballot the responsibility of the civilian right i i completely agree that it's definitely by your choices your actions and so on and i will also agree that the police does have a job to keep and by <laughs> i mean like i said we employ you our taxes pay you right so the the concepts then of corrupt corruption in police department 
we have we see that that there are certain officers that do get away with certain things in the public eye in the public eye mm -hmm. and we then sit back and say but if we can't trust our people in authority to take care of us then why then when something happens in my community do i as, as a civilian feel the need to to call a department that i don't even trust no the trust is on our side it's it's way out there and it's it's widespread for the public because we're the police department mm -hmm. but it starts at home i was raised by a mother with six siblings it's six of us but one was always in some kind of an issue mm -hmm. that is our society right now that is our department right now there's always that one mm -hmm. that is going to make the news there's always that one that the society will turn against. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I walked into a residence years ago where at the door I was met with profanity for 47 minutes before I could assist a youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But who will have that patience? Yeah. Now, <laughs> I tell people, you can, you can do two things when it comes to a job. You can be at work and you can come to work. Mm -hmm. So... It's a choice. It's a choice to be corrupt. It's a choice to be a good person. And it's a choice for you to go into a, a community and show them that you're real. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's been Chris Noble 101 since. I, I'd like to kind of, <clears throat> I listened to what April said and I agree with some of it, I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. Not, not the entirety of what she said earlier. Because, for one, I think we so need I to have be more fair. people on my side. <laughs> it's not about think, sides. It's about who is being protected and who feels safe. No, I, no <laughs> I, I'll say this, though. In fairness to the situation, we accept that corruption is prevalent wherever you look. So we can't just say the police department alone. Granted, you'll have good cops, you'll have bad cops. Mm -hmm. Just like in any government, just like in any department, mm -hmm. you do have people any who... Mm -hmm. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So, it shouldn't serve as a deterrent, though, to say, well, we will not engage with the police department. Because, think of it, you could not like a fireman. You if could not like the coffee. ambulance <laughs> person, but if your house is on fire, you call the fireman. If, you're, if exactly. someone got knocked down in front of you, you call the ambulance. So, it's the same thing if a crime happens, regardless of whether or not you like the officers or the officer you still need to call law enforcement to address the issue right so i think that's where the sense of confidence begins yeah. no i just came back to the city recently mm -hmm. but i wasn't away from the city the entire time yeah i was i was gifted to an area where we had some issues mm -hmm. it was not doom and gloom and we had to remedy those issues. Now, popularly, that area had reductions. Mm -hmm. So, as said by the commissioner, the soundness of operation and administration, no problem. So, I'm here now, but I never did leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never did leave. No instilling on everybody. Everybody that goes to the academy goes through lessons. But common sense is not, not inside. Taught at, it's, it's not, not taught at the academy. Not inside the academy. Boss, you either have that or you not have that. However, <laughs> however, yeah. you have less than that millisecond mm -hmm. to make a decision at times that will cost mm -hmm. us as a department a lot. Mm -hmm. For or that the purpose. State, or the state for that matter. For that, exactly. Mm -hmm. For that, we have to be continual in reminding training and updating our officers to where they're accepted mm -hmm. i said i said uh, well an officer said to me after juve because we were out early mm -hmm. he said officer he said even though we had the stabbing he said about four people passed me and said thank you officer mm -hmm. that has never happened or how I, and i said to the officer how much years you have as a police he said 18. Mm -hmm. so 
it shows that there's a thankful community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It shows that they're not, there's, there's a community out there that accepts law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But that part that we need to bridge is the exact part she mentioned mm -hmm. where I've had a bad experience and I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is like you going to the doctor and having a bad an, an ailment where they issue a medication and it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Then you go to another doctor and he says, the, the other doctor gives you something else and it gets way better. But it's not to say that all doctors are the same. There right? you go. Mm -hmm. Do you think, and I guess this is, um, this is my question, I, I, I personally believe that we don't have enough. I, I feel like there's not enough manpower in the police department. There's never there's enough. There will never I, be. I, <laughs> yeah. Personally, right? Um, <laughs> but then I, I ask myself, why do we not have um, many persons going in to the to the academy we we do feel that we do need and i know people that that apply to the police academy they go through their ranks and so on but do you think that we have enough enrollment as it is right now as at this stage i believe there is there's a move afoot to enroll another 150 to 200 people mm -hmm. but our application process is 3000 mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. how is sadly, that betting Vetting. Sadly, our vetting process is lengthy, mm -hmm. and it's only a limited amount of people that are, that are accepted. I would say the police, the BDF, the Coast Guard, those are security agencies, all three of them. If you choose one, go ahead and try it. Right? Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, when I joined up, and I say a couple, <laughs> it's, it was not joining was not my choice mm -hmm. but going into it was something i learned i can give back through it mm -hmm. and it's been that way ever since now if i accept that i'm a part of this community and i work for this community it will happen on my part now yeah. it's for us to instill that on every ranking member every person on the street every patrolman that is out there mm -hmm. because sometimes a simple good morning mm -hmm. will make somebody's way. day yeah. and like john public police officers come to work with issues mm -hmm. it is for us to figure out interventions and for us to figure out support if you're confident in what you do and where you do it you will work better mm -hmm. however it starts with you I go back again one more time. We still right? go back. I have to go back because it's who I am. Um, when it comes to that relationship, that public with the public service relationship, and the, I mean, it's not like when I said public servant, so it's a public officer. When it comes to the police why would, officer. Why would, why would we be mm -hmm. taking advantage of me with. But I do what? support that carnival group that <laughs> oh, then made that. Are people not into that? Then they, they not watch that. He did talk about the um the one that is on screen. I, I really like that, by the way. Yes. But no, when it comes to the relationship between <laughs> the public officer and public, right? How do you believe that we can bridge that gap of trust within the community? Because we, you, I, I agree with you. We do need. It's in every each service, other. however every service individually has to figure out a way where they would be going mm -hmm. to embrace that part of the people they serve mm -hmm. i from my side i would say that we've been working on it and there are times when people say it got better mm -hmm. and at times people say it got worse it is based on experience but the only the only manner in which we can go forward is to work on what we have failed at mm -hmm. to become successful. Mm. The department has various faces or dimensions, if I could use that description, right? To answer part of what April was asking. You have the community policing unit, which is the which is public relations... To, which is unfair to do because... Mm -hmm. Community policing should never be a unit. Mm -hmm. It should be something across the, the board. board. Mm -hmm. Fair Thankfully, enough. we uh -huh. have a unit that mm -hmm. assists us by only working that. Mm -hmm. We have other agencies, other units that do other things. 
but for us that's so where I was going mm -hmm. community policing it is not community policing unit we're all community policing officers, officers. fair enough okay thanks for that <laughs> clarification but the point that i was making is simply this you have officers who do community work at that level such as howell Gillett and his initiative to directly engage with certain members of community certain neighborhoods etc yes then you also have another aspect of the, the department that does intelligence work for instance mm -hmm. right you have the yes. gi3 then you have other the point that i'm making is look it's not every officer that you will encounter will deal with you in a harsh and stiff manner mm -hmm. it's not every officer that you encounter is there to rough you up and what have you i think it's your level of engagement with the officer that not, that not, goes not, a long not so way much so it's not by unit mm -hmm. mr Gillett is a prime example that mm -hmm. that officers can be cordial friendly cordial professional all of that mm -hmm. and let me give you another real example i was with another senior officer and i looked at i was at marian jones to await the end of the carnival mm -hmm. this young man decides he will pay to go in but he doesn't want to be told where to go mm -hmm. so he berates the officer mm -hmm. the carnival um association person had to physically hold on to him and when mm -hmm. she held on to him he shrugged her hand he shrugged the officer's hand mm -hmm. and he still he ended up going where they were directed mm -hmm. was dire were directing him to go i asked two officers i said go and get him mm -hmm. and bring him to us and they brought him in a vehicle handcuffed mm -hmm. this is somebody huffing and puffing yeah hot because he believed that he was in the right no police the chance me mm -hmm. i never do nothing Mm -hmm. and this 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 wrong i spoke to him at the at the inception the other senior member spoke to him likewise and asked him basic questions why did you do that mm -hmm. his answers were so basic that because i'm a one go there <laughs> but you're being told you you're can't being go told there you can't go yeah. there mm -hmm. no this is a young man that went to see the end of the carnival mm -hmm and he's not upset because i don't pay mm -hmm. and i will not be seeing the end mm -hmm. of the carnival mm -hmm. this other member said to the officer take off the handcuff come here young man mm -hmm. and when he came he said stand right here beside me you want a the water they gave him a water and he said do you believe that you were fair to that lady and that man mm -hmm. you tell me they were telling you and you went the, the other way anyway mm -hmm. so well, officer you know sometimes we get upset do you believe you were fair mm -hmm. and state he said no what do you believe if you were an officer you would do to the person that did that i would send him home you just answered where i would prefer you to be mm -hmm. instead of a cell yeah. and the young man chose to say well if you will if you will give me an opportunity i will go home Mm -hmm. and starts to walk home he sits i looked at him and he sat when he sat where he was on his phone doodling then he gets two friends to say hi who are going into the carnival mm -hmm. he came back just said, uh, would you allow me to go back in mm -hmm. why i'm with my friends Humble. and with his friends it is the same young man with a different attitude yeah yeah your mentality takes you one place mm -hmm. you know your attitude will make you sore it, it's 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 that easy mm -hmm. and he went back in <laughs> then i get a touch different at, the, outlook. at yeah. the end of the carnival mm -hmm. thank you sir you say I, mm -hmm. I enjoy myself i'm going home now mm -hmm. so then you wondered oh, yeah, what was all of that about in the first exactly. instance right yeah. why <laughs> all the anger mm -hmm. there is no need Mm -hmm. Like I said, I mean, I personally, I just think it comes back to this level of one, I just wonder why I want it with no kind of authority. Two, 
trust within between the different parties and the community because that could have gone a whole different way too. Most definitely. Right. So uh, it it all it all comes down to attitudes of the different persons involved. I I see this. But, I don't. But, I've never had an incident with an officer that has led me to say police are bad people. I've never had that. Mm -hmm. What I am going based on is the amount of reports, but I'm going based on personal observances that I have seen. And so when, it, when I say it has to be the responsibility of everybody involved, I do mean officer, public, standbyers alike, where we're able to hold everybody accountable, oh. right? So this young man going back and tell his story to other people with a different perspective on, on, on authority. Mm -hmm. If the situation had gone where he ended up in, in his house, it may have been a completely different situation Most at definitely. hand. Right? Most definitely. Okay. At least we agreed on something today. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm hoping we have more agreements. Yeah. <laughs> but Superintendent, we're, we're slowly wrapping up. Do you have any final words for our viewers when it comes to crime and safety in Belize? That safety begins with you. Mm -hmm. Our job is to make sure that you're okay. For the festivities, you've seen what we've done so far. We intend to up that and make sure that everybody throughout the season going forward is safe. Um, the commanders that are in charge of these areas are briefed. Mm -hmm. I'll ask that event organizers mm -hmm. come in to us and not get us off guard and have us scrambling for officers because this is a time where we use a lot of our officers. Mm -hmm. And understand that everything, one, it has a cost. To you and to us. Mm -hmm. Don't cheat your security for your pocket because it may end up costing you your pocket because you cheated security. Mm -hmm. So come in to us. Um, Mr. Petch is at Raccoon Street that, and he is the person that deals with that when it comes to numbers. Mm -hmm. Don't come with a number because there is numbers that we have set out for places like Marian Jones, BTL Park, the Civic Center, all these areas that have large events, we've set out numbers minimal to cover. If anybody was at the second night of the Belikin Bash, mm -hmm. 50 police, and you could see none. Mm -hmm. But not because they weren't there, but the because of the are swell. Are yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think Carnival saw upwards of 4,000 people. Mm -hmm. Again, a large number of officers mm -hmm. you only saw them in the beginning and at the end mm -hmm. because they were spread out yeah but spread out because we we're trying to be strategic in what mm -hmm. we're doing so to the public be safe um trust in what we do but allow us to do it when we're supposed to i know that the new phenomenon is take your phone out and video mm -hmm. no problem no no problem where or one or two officers have heard i don't think we should be crucified for it but we are dealing with them yeah but assist us by following through so for, for from me it's let's have a safe celebration and let's try and maintain safety in and across the city and the district perfect All right. thank you superintendent and with that, we're going to take our final break and we'll be back for a wrap up. So stay tuned.